Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of NYSC Half Hour. I am Inken Agonwa. Today's episode is nostalgic for us as we caught up with a former director, press and public relations of the NYSC, Mrs. Bosse Adewigbigbe. She retired from the service in 2017, but is certainly not tired. She shares with us her journey during her service with the scheme and the lessons she picked along the way. She credits the National Youth Service Corps as a molder of strong character that sticks with you for a lifetime. Let us meet Mrs. Adewi Bibi. I'm Bosse Adewi Bibi a retired director of press and public relations of the NYSC. I retired precisely September 2017. And now I should be resting, <laughs> but not totally resting. <laughs> I miss my colleagues, most especially the PROs nationwide. I really miss them. But I follow them on their WhatsApp group and I'm enjoying every bit of what they are doing. When I retired, I rested a little bit and I started an outfit like a crutch, which I have extended to nursery and kindergarten school now. Already we are into basic classes now, we're in basic three now. It's really been interesting working with children. After working with youth, I can see that my ministry mainly is with children and I'm enjoying it. Mrs. Adewi Bibi commends the strong values instilled in staff and core members by the NYSC, which has helped shape her personal and professional life. NYC is an organization one would love to work with. I started working with NYC after graduation and being youthful too, I was enjoying every bit of it until I got married. Working with youth has really been an experience and it has really helped me in the training of my children and other, all my friends' children. NYC is an organization, a disciplined organization, an organization where you work and you, you will be happy that you have worked in NYC. It's an organization that has molded me as a person in terms of discipline, in terms of hard work, in terms of a lot of things, even has helped me in my marital life too. It has helped me in the upbringing of my children. When I see youth sag their trousers, open their shirts, unbutton their shirts and all kinds of things, I just look at it, ah, ah, in NYC you don't do this, you don't do that. And when you try to correct them, they will feel that you are getting too much into their private life. But I see it that anybody that works in NYC should be able to bring up any child or precisely youth in every area of their life and I really enjoyed them. every bit of my stay in NYC. I really thank God about it. Getting to the peak of her career ranks as her most fulfilling experience. Also having the opportunity to experience the diversity of Nigeria. My happiest moment working with NYC has been when I became a director of NYC, getting to the peak of my career. It wasn't easy but at least God did it. And the most interesting part of it all was going around all the states of the Federation with my director generals. I can say and be bold enough that Nigeria is vast, Nigeria is blessed, because there's no state of the Federation I've not visited. All the states of the Federation, the 36 states of the Federation, including FCT, had been really journey making. Traveling is a hobby for me. And that really helped me in, when I worked in NYC. I can precisely say 
this is the route to this place, this is where you will take to get to. When people ask me, like for example this morning, somebody's child was posted to <laughs> Zamfara and she called me to say, my daughter has been posted to Zamfara. Please, which way is it to Zamfara? I just started laughing. I said, Zamfara is Nigeria. Yeah. Ah, okay, why don't you go through this route? Go through this route. Said, ah, or take a plane to Sokoto. From Sokoto, you can get to Zamfara. Somebody asked me, where is he saying? And they live in Lagos. They don't know where he's saying is. You can imagine. I was, I now started describing where he's saying is for somebody who is from Ogun State. Doesn't know where he's saying is. NYC exposed me a lot, and I'm really glad that I had that Nigeria is vast and we're one in Nigeria. Whatever is done in the southwest is done in the southeast, is done in the south, in the north. So I don't see any reason why we are fighting ourselves and say that we want to do this, we want to do that. I think Nigeria, that exposed me a little bit. So in fact, in the east, when I worked in the west, I had the privilege of working in a boring state to be precise. That was a, my, the best of my working career. I enjoyed every bit of my stay in the East. In terms of knowing the people, in, stand, in terms of speaking the language, it exposed me a little bit. When they speak, I understand, and they will be laughing. After they say anything and I say, I repeat what they have said in English, they will say, Mommy, you are picking our language first. And I think it's NYC really taught me a lot of things and I'm glad there's no regrets I have working in NYSC. Speaking on the deployment policy of the NYSC, she states that it is carefully designed to foster national integration and unity. If we can maintain the posting of NYC to expose our children to go where they cannot even speak the language, where they have not lived before, it will help a lot. I'll give you an example. When I was state coordinator in NYC or your state, there was a place we visited that shared boundary with the Republic of Benin. A Lagos boy was posted to that place. And the place precisely is Shekbeteri. Going around on inspection, when we got there, we found him, he had uh, a decoder, he had uh, this uh, antenna, and he was watching and all these um, championship football. It was, he had a fridge. It was powering the fridge with this small generator. And he was enjoying his life. When I asked him, would you want to go back to Lagos? He said, mommy, I'm exposed here. I've never been to this part of the country and I want to make myself happy. It's part of national integration, making himself happy. He has visited another place. Apart from Lagos life, he went somewhere made himself to key into whatever they are doing and that part of nigeria too there's a place there that they don't even wear clothes they just tie around their waist and they are almost going naked this boy took it upon himself to educate these people he will go around converse for clothes for them and please expose them to life and he was inviting them to come and watch television which they had never seen in their life so if we allow our core members not to refuse posting to go to the nooks and crannies of nigeria i think that would be the better part of what nyc is doing she advises young people to be hardworking and patient in their pursuit of success my advice for them is that they should take it easy. In this era, all they are after is money. I want to buy Ferrari, I want to do this, I want to be rich, I want to do this, I want to do that. These children should be patient. Money will come. It might not come immediately, but with patience, money will come. It's only God that blesses. You can't rush for money. You can't rush for affluence. It will come. So they should be patient. They should tow the line of discipline, the lines of patience, the line of the godly line for them to be able to acquire. And I know with the special grace of God, patience brings a lot of things, good things. Thank you so much, ma'am. 
Thank you for your dedication and commitment throughout your service at the scheme. Certainly, the children in your school are beyond lucky to have you. We move on to our next story on ex call member Cynthia Emohe. She is an NYSC skill acquisition and entrepreneurship development trainer in Lagos State. Cynthia is the CEO of Cine's Beauty School. She keyed into the income SAID training on makeup artistry. Over the years, she has honed the skills and is today a SAID trainer herself and has over the years trained over 1,000 people. Super impressive, right? Let us meet her. Hello everyone, my name is Cynthia Emir, I am from Edo State, I'm a trainer and the uh, Money Teenage Beauty School. So I'm one of the facilitators um, with SAID program, which is the Skill Acquisition and Entrepreneurship Development to train and empower call members on all of these skills. Makeup, facials, gele tying, auto gele, nail fixing, wig making, revamp coloring, and of course, Babin, we've got gender skills right here. So yes, my studio in the premises. So join me in my world. This fantastic place of mine, I've been able to pass out over 1,000 students who are doing excellently well in their respective states. This is Gelatine right here. This is um, the makeup department right here. This is um, the auto gele department right here. This is the nails art department right here. And of course, we've got convenience available for their comfort, which is the toilet over here. Here is the aircut section, known as Babin. Here is the wig making, revamp, styling, and coloring department. And right here, we've got the facial machine, of which I just showed you the facial department. I acquired most of these skills, some of these skills, I'll say, during my um, service days. And um, that was um, 2013. I've always had in mind to own um, a training center, um, skill acquisition center precisely. You know, that way I'll be able to empower the youths and um, it, um, help ease off the rate of unemployment in the society. Thanks to NYC side for giving me the opportunity to, you know, explore my um, dreams. Yes. Why I said so is um, during my service year, once I got on camp, I never knew there would be the side program. So, um, Fortunately, I, you know, met with the program and um, I signed in and um, training was fantastic. Um, all of the trainers had to make um, training kits available for um, core members as at that time to help with um, practicals during training. I've trained over thousands of coppers from batch to batch, year to year. And I'm happy they are all doing well in their respective states. My name is Majekodumi Bumi Grace. My short period here, I've learned a lot thanks to the availability of the training kit. I've learned how to braid, how to make different cornrows, twists, and braids as well as how to make um, wigs. And then I thank NYC for the opportunity to call members to acquire a skill before going into the labor market. When I joined the class, I intended using the skill for myself alone just to have a beautiful face whenever I go out. But immediately the class started, I have a change of mind because I saw a different thing that I wasn't expecting initially. The first thing is that she gave us 
free uh, kit to train with, which most of those people who do that outside, they won't give their apprentices skills to train with. So she gave us that. And I also learned the business aspect of the makeup from her, which I wasn't actually planning to get. I started uh, late last month, and for now I can do the basic makeup. I, I can actually make up for people to go out to attend parties rather than when when I could not do it on myself, that is not even perfect for myself, but now I do for people to go out with it. My training so far has been very fantastic. Like I've learned different ways to revamp and transform wigs because I'm a um, hair revamp artist in the making. So I've learned a lot about treating the hair, the right product to use. The reason why I signed up for this was because of the training kit that was provided with a fantastic offer. Like the price was... I don't know, it was out of it. I couldn't get it anywhere else but here. All thanks to NYC Said for bringing me this flat and platform rather to work with Sinis Beauty School in order to be able to be my own boss and be able to create a niche for myself after my service here. Joining Said, I was exposed to a whole world of entrepreneurship. People that actually move the society are the entrepreneurs, no matter how small. It could be any skill, it could be any field of study, but the entrepreneurs are the ones that move the society forward. They control their income and they control basically the employment to a certain degree. So coming here, I was able to learn about entrepreneurship. I was able to learn about how to treat customers because we're in the service industry and customers are actually the pillars of the service industry. I learned how to treat my customers well. I learned how to pamper them and make sure they feel very important to ensure that I get the most out of them and also deliver the most service to them. So that's it for entrepreneurship. And in the barbing sector, I learned various skills. So basically I learned about the type of clippers, how to open a clipper, debug it, understand what's going wrong with it, um, fix it up, and also um, make it work well again. And also in terms of skills, even though I'm still in training, I've learned various types of haircuts. One thing they cemented in my mind is how to do the skin. I think that's what we started with. After NYSC, I can't definitely let all these skills go to waste. I'll definitely start up a barbing shop. Um, the key is starting one. Once I start one up, see how everything runs, I'll plan I'll plan on replicating it. One will generate um, a certain level of income. So imagine having two, three, four, five, six, and just replicating the model throughout um, the entire um, shops. And yeah, that's the big plan. I would like to thank the um, NYSC SAI department so much. And I also like to thank Sinin's Beauty School because there was a real synergy between them. The training kits were available. So basically all I have to do is show up and get learning so i would like to thank them so much for making this platform available and training me on how to be an entrepreneur even though barbing is one of the skills they use to teach that to me i actually choose this this particular because i i noticed that a, a whole lot of people don't take care of their own face they don't they just think it's just when you just rub when you work up with the body you rub um, cream and you go and your face looks rough with a lot of um, sebum and a lot of acne on on the face. So now this process, this 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 was actually what made me actually look into this aspect. So that if you look at somebody, that person should should actually have that that glow on his or her face and not have having um, acne on his or her face. Initially. I thought of just um, doing it for just myself. But then coming here and seeing all this, and with a wonderful trainer, Miss Cynthia, and with the way she, she carried us, with the way she trained us, it gave me a different perspective that I could actually set up something. No matter how small it is, it would, it would actually go, it go a long way in helping. Because in this country we are in, uh, white collar jobs are very few. So you, you need a skill set so that you can be able to augment with, with your finance. I appreciate the federal government. 
I appreciate the the federal ministry of youth and and also most importantly for this school Senex Beauty because they made it possible. Without them, this would not be possible. So I thank them so much. And I hope that they are, I won't be the, the only one that actually gain from this wonderful experience that all other people too can actually can actually benefit from this. Thanks to NYC Said for giving me the opportunity to, to explore my creativity, explore my skills, because um, my skills is being, um, is being reflected in the, um, in the lives of the individuals I trained over the years. So without NYC Said, it would have been possible for me to be able to achieve that number precisely and also carry out my dream plans. That was amazing. Our next story is an ex call member, Kurode Sunday. He was posted to Ebonyi State in 2019 for his service here and was deployed to Hepzibah Comprehensive College, Aba Omwage, for his primary assignment. Beyond being a social studies and civic education teacher, he trained the students on how to make liquid soups, snacks, in addition to other life skills. He also donated books that would help prepare students for life after high school. Let us go to Hepzibah Comprehensive College and meet the proprietor and the students. Come with us. My name is Mwafo Kelechi Clement. So I'm also from this community, Abomege, autonomous community, and the proprietor of Hezba Comprehensive College, Abomege. The core member, Corridor Sunday, served in this school, Hezba Comprehensive College, Abomege, 219 to 220. So, and when he was serving here, he actually did well academically and other areas. So he carried, I know he carried a project here. When he was serving here, he trained the students on how to make a, a liquid soap, chinchin and other things. So which equally produced, gave some portion to the students, to the school and to the Onicha local government chairman. So during that time, he did well, he served well here so and we we pray and bless him that wherever he get to god is going to bless him and lift him high because actually he was he was obedient he was obedient when he was with us here he served well that he was among the best coppers that served us here copper sunday was good when he was in this school so when he was about going out of the school, so he made so many projects, did so many of our youth in this community, many things that you can know how to do chim chim, liquid soap, batting soap, how you can make buns or fish roll or meat pie. He had inspired us in many ways by teaching us how to be obedient when serving in Nigeria, that we should try to be loyal to our country or our state, that we should make sure we do the right thing at the right time. He taught us social study in the junior class while in the senior class, civic education. So he did, really did well in this school. He inculcated many value, many moral values in us. He even did many things, hosting many other things that he did in this school. Teach us how to produce liquid soup and after which he sell those liquid soup in one market. He also donated books. He donated a, good, a very good book in this school. The name of the book is Life After High School. The book inspired us on what to do after school. I even wish to do more than him when I'm in, the, in his position after school, after my university, because he told us that we should not end up in secondary school, that we should try to further our education to university level, so that after which we can be able to do more than him.
so great to see the gratitude of students of Hebzibah Comprehensive College. Well done, Karede Sunday, and other core members across the country who are making a difference in their host communities. We will be right back. On the news today, stakeholders advocate establishment of NYSC Trust Fund. Eminent Nigerians from different walks of life have lent their support to the establishment of NYSC Trust Fund as it would address infrastructural deficits in the scheme, as well as provide startup capital to core members to establish their businesses after the completion of the service year. This was part of the deliberations at a symposium on the imperatives of an NYSC Trust Fund themed Consolidating the Gains of the NYSC in Youth Empowerment and National Development in the Face of Current Economic Realities, the Imperatives of a Trust Fund held in Abuja. The FCT Minister Alhaji Mohamed Musabello, while declaring the symposium open, commended NYSC management for rising to the occasion to address the challenges confronting the operations of the scheme through the proposed trust fund. The NYSC Director General, Brigadier General Shwahibu Ibrahim, said the essence of the symposium is to engender greater appreciation of the imperative of an NYSC trust fund and also generate ideas that will facilitate its actualization as well as the realization of the set objectives. Welcome back. And thank you for investing your time with us on today's episode of NYSC Half Hour. We always love to hear from you. Please write to us on the online handles displayed on your screens right now, and we would write back. Remember, the safety of core members in our communities is the responsibility of you and I. Until I see you next time, I am Inkem Agonwa. Stay safe.